In today's tutorial, let's do family mittens. The title of this video is the size that we're going to be working on in today's pattern. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the family mittens and the intro will be all the same for all four sizes. Then the video will divide off and we'll do the size that's indicated in the title of this video. So let me get you started. Let's take a look at the pattern and how to read this pattern and then the video then will change to the size that was indicated. So looking at the pattern we have four different sizes. We have two to four years of age, six to eight. It jumps to ladies which is the adult large and then men's which is extra large adult. Now in most of the patterns on yarnspirations.com there is color coding when it has decisions to be made. So you can see that there's four different colors and so when you're looking at the entire pattern you will see color coding happening and that's indicating that a decision needs to be made. So let's take a closer look at that and let's see how to read this pattern. So instead of writing four different patterns they've written one and they've put in where a decision needs to be made. So we can see that there's the small, there's the medium, large and extra large. So anytime a decision needs to be made you will see that it's always in brackets. So if you were doing the kid size of two to four years of age you will say chain nine. But if you're working on the men's adult you will say chain fourteen. So anytime a decision needs to be made there will be indications of that within the pattern. So for example here it says join the seam line right here. Do you see that there's no color coding in here? This tells me that everything needs to be done the same no matter what size pattern you're doing because there's no color coding available. So when you eliminate all this extra space that all of these uh, information actually has the pattern is not as detailed as you might think. So when you go to flip the page for example and you see a lot of writing just like so. So let's uh, take a look and we're doing the thumb for example. So you get right here and it says this is only for large and extra large size. So if you were working on the kids versions of two to four or six to eight this you completely ignore. And then it says all sizes then picks back up and then you have to just look at that and just go down. So what I like to do is that I grab a, a highlighter and I highlight which one that I want to do when I'm working on a pattern so that I don't mess up on where I am. So this is actually really kind of an easy pattern to be able to follow and uh, when you break it down and just look at it from step by step it's a lot easier than you may realize as well. So you'll notice that the family is wearing different colors. So she's got here a gold here and then a gray here for a cuff. So you can change it out. This uh, young man has stripes within his and then he has all one solid color and so does this one here. So you can change the colors to match whatever you would like to do and you say that it's version one, two or three and that's just a color version. It's nothing to do with the stitches at all. So you can have a lot of fun. So just because you have a red color doesn't mean it has to be all red. It means that you could either do cuff or or top or do stripes. Anything that you would like to do to make it a little more interesting. So when we're going to start with these we're going to start with the cuff and I'm going to show you all four sizes now and then we're going to then jump to the specific size that today's tutorial is focused on. So for me I have to do my homework. I have to do things in advance so that I understand the pattern and I've done all the cuffs in advance. So I'm gonna get you started and then we're gonna get to the end and then show you what to do. So all the cuffs are done in a rectangular shape and we have to get to a certain measurement that it states in the pattern. So we have two to four, six to eight ladies and men's just like so. So once you get this done you just literally fold it up like this and then you join it with the slip seam. So you can see how much more smaller it is once you fold. So it's not a hard pattern in order to follow. So this here is done by slip stitching. You will spend more time on the cuff on this particular one than you will on the top part of this. And the reason for it is that you're doing slip stitching but I have to tell you as a personal point of view this is the best elasticity you'll ever get. It takes longer to crochet yes but it looks like it's knitting and I have to tell you spend the time and do this. So of the mittens so far this is my favorite cuff of all of them and because it just looks absolutely amazing. I've done hats with this kind of um, a configuration again and I wear it and I most prefer it in the winter and look at the stretch that you can get with that. So it's a really great uh, little pattern to work with. So, so for today's pattern I'm going to use Bernat satin yarn and I'm going to use a five millimeter size H crochet hook today. So let's begin starting the cuff. So let's start the two to four years of age and this is the size cuff that we're going to be looking for at the end when we get this done. Notice where I finished off and where the tail is. So you want to be opposite to each other when you go to finish so that you can start the next part of this process. But how do we get here? Let me show you that next. So let's begin to do the cuff and we're going to create a slip knot just like this and we're going to insert our hook. 
So for the, this one of the two to four years of age, we need to chain nine. So let's uh, do that now. So we're just gonna chain nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And I know what you're thinking. This chain looks really long, but it's not. It's gonna compress and you gotta trust in me on that. So what we're gonna do is that we're going to come back across this chain now as a slip stitch. So you're just gonna go in and go into the back loop only of the stitch or of the chain and that was the second from the hook. So let me just put this back, back on. So second, so count back. So one and two, go to the second one and into the back and just slip stitch. So just pull through and through. If you're new to crochet, you want to be mindful of your tension for this. Okay, so slip stitches we tend to make too tight. So you're just gonna work all the way down the chain and you're just gonna slip stitch just like this. Now the slip stitching takes longer to make a cuff and I told you that in the intro of this video that the cuffs, you'll probably spend more time on the cuffs than you will on the upper part of these mittens. But it's the cuffs that really make a difference in mittens. Uh, I think as a child, I, well I don't think, I know as a child when you get ice or snow down your mittens or your gloves, it is the worst feeling on the wrists. So I like the attention to the particular cuffs in this particular uh, mitten design. So you're just gonna work your way down and you can see this already compressed your chain. So what you're gonna do is that you're just gonna work back and forth doing slip stitching all the way back and forth. But watch what I do. So I just finished. Now usually what we do is that we turn and we go into the back loop for these. But the problem is you can't really see it. Even from the perspective of the camera, you can't see it. I can't see it where I am. So what I do is that I, when I go to finish like this, I turn it so it looks straight back at me. So I'm sitting right behind the camera here. So what I want to do is that you don't chain one and you just immediately dive into the back loop only. So you look at this and you see that there's two strands of string. Okay, so you see one and two. So looking at it from this perspective, the first one is the front loop and the other one is the back loop. So you wanna play in the black back loops only for the entire cuff. So you want to just ignore that front one and go right into the back like so. So just going in and then just slip stitching. So that first one is easier to get into than it is to turn it all the way around and try to find it. So sometimes with these particular cuffs I like to work on them like they're an angle instead of straight back. Again you will find your rhythm. So you wanna just work your way down. At certain points of this you're going to want to count. So we chain nine to begin and then we went second chain from the hook. That means that there's only gonna be eight slip stitches across this row. So if your tension is a little tight, it makes it a lot harder to do. And for myself, because I'm on a filming desk, I'm a little slower than I normally would be. And that's because it's just a little bit further from my body than I'm normally used to crocheting. And so this is requiring almost like delicate steps in some way. So I want to make sure that once in a while I'm counting and I'm getting eight. It's easy to sometimes mess up and, and do nine or sometimes uh, try to uh, eliminate stitches out. So you wanna count once in a while to make sure that you got fully. So you go all the way to the end. So you're gonna st begin again. So you're gonna turn your work. Okay, so I just turned it so it's straight back, diving into the back one there, yarning over, pulling it through and through, and then going back in the back loops again. So I'm actually getting a little looser now. So I just continue to work back and forth. So for the cuffs, we have to get a, a certain amount of dimensions and here it is four inches. So you're gonna grab your tape measure and when you get to four inches, you're gonna stop and you're gonna stop so that the strand is here, right here and the tail is down here. So let me just back out a little bit and you see that there, right? Okay, so just continue to go back loops only, sing, uh, slip stitching until you get to four inches. So the two to four years of age, we should now have a total of four inches just like you see here and see where the tail is here and see where I am right now. They're opposite to each other. What I wanna do now is that I wanna seal the deal and now make this completely round. So what I'm gonna do is fold this up, okay, and I folded it up away from me. And what we're gonna do is that we're going to still play with the slip stitching concept only one last time and we're gonna dive right into the one here of the back loop but the other one, because I had you go in the back loop of the, the chain, there's gonna be a total of two strands on this side on the foundation. And you're gonna go straight across and you're going to slip stitch those into position. 
Okay, so just slip stitch it, it brings everything together. So in the first one here, just go into the next one, it's the back loop only. Okay, and the other one is gonna be two loops because it's a foundation chain and you're gonna slip. And I want you to slip all the way down this cuff. Okay, and this is going to make it all look like it's seamless going all the way around. It's a great little concept. You'll see it maybe just slightly but it's not enough to make you go crazy. So you're gonna just continue to do that because you've been monitoring your stitches and counting as you go you will not run out of stitches by the time you get to the other side. Well at least you hope right? So let's continue to go and I still have two stitches left. And then I'm gonna go into the final last stitch here and the final on the other side. Just like that. So I've just now slip stitched myself all the way across and now this is what it will look like. So if you open it up you don't barely see it at all. So now let's begin and we're gonna start working our way now towards the top of the mitten. So when I finished I was working my way across. I did not fasten off and what I want to do is leave the straggler down on top and we wanna trap that in a position so we we lose it and we never see it ever again. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna circle around the top layer right here and we're going to begin by chaining one and I need you to strategically place 18 single crochets all the way around. So just going into the stitches on the side and just count out. So let's just do that now. So that's just one and and two, three, eight, and nine. Now here's the thing. Now I'm halfway around. I got 18 in here, but look, I'm actually halfway around. So I got eight, or sorry, I got nine in there already halfway. So that means I just have to get another nine in all the way back. So if I'm at nine and I'm at the halfway point, I know that I'm doing it right when I'm going into the outside here. So continue all the way around then and get your 18 in. So I'm now all the way back around. I confirmed that I have 18 and I just want to attach it to the top of the first one that I started with, the first single crochet. So the 18 number really matters. So just make sure that you do have 18 before you continue on. So let's move along to the next uh, two rounds. The next two rounds are identical to each other. I'll show you how to do both. We're gonna chain up two and coming into the same one, the chaining of two doesn't count as anything in this particular pattern and what we want to do is that we want to go all the way around. So coming back into the same one, you want to half double crochet and you're gonna want a half double crochet in each of the stitches and there will be a total of 18 going all the way around. So please do that for this round and I'll see you, I'll show you how to just uh, attach it and do another round. So I'm all the way back around. I confirm that I have 18 and I wanna join it to the top. So a lot of people think that this last one here that looks like a stitch is a stitch but it's not. It's just a part, part of the join when you go to do it the last time. So just gonna join it to the beginning half double crochet. So the next round is gonna be exactly the same. So chain of two coming into the same one and I want you to half double crochet in every stitch going around and you will again have 18 as you go. So please do that and join it um, at the end and I will start you on the next round after that. Okay, now that I'm all the way back around, we now have to make room for a thumb gusset. So when we look at our hand, you see how your hand jets out. We have to make room for that in order for this to happen. So we're gonna be doing that next in this part of this tutorial and there's uh, three rounds in order to make that happen for the size. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain up two and then remember that doesn't count as anything and I want you to half double crochet into eight, the next eight which includes this first one. So let's begin and count those together. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and then we're gonna do eight. So you can either double count that if you want to or you can trust in yourself. The next two are gonna be two half double crochets each. So this is the thumb starting to come out. So you're gonna put two into this one and two into the next one like so. So you don't need to count anymore. You can just continue to half double crochet then back to where you were and then just join it with the slip stitch and I'll see you there in a second. Okay, so let's look at it here. So this is gonna be starting to jet out on the other side of the slip stitch right over here. So let's begin the next round and we're gonna chain up two. Does not count as a half double crochet, it's a builder. And so this time it's gonna be another eight in a row. So let's count those out again, half double crochets for eight. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, 
four, five, six, seven, and eight. So here's what we're gonna do in this round. The next one is gonna have two half double crochets in it. So one and two. And then the next two are going to be one each. Okay, so just one half double crochet in the next two. And then finally the next one after that is gonna have two half double crochets into the same one. So now that you've completed that, you're just gonna continue around to where you started and then just join it with the slip stitch and I'll show you what to do for the next round. So here's where we are right now. We just slip stitch and you can see that this thumb is starting to really build out at this point. So let's do the third round together. So this is the final round for the thumb area and we're gonna chain up two and we're gonna do again another eight. So coming into the same one underneath and let's count up those together. So we got one, and two, we have three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now we're gonna start the, the next part. So we're gonna do two into the next one. So one and two. And then the next four are gonna be one half double crochet each. So you're gonna say one, two, three, and four. And then the next two are, or the next one is gonna be two into the same one. So one, and two and then that's it. So you just continue then around again one half double crochet and then just join it with a slip stitch and I'll see you on the next one and the next time we're gonna start doing some thumb work. Let's begin to do that next. So here's what it looks like at this point. You can see the thumb was starting to jet out so like this. These are right or left. It depends what the way you're gonna wear them. It doesn't matter. They're both the same. You're gonna need a stitch marker for the next round as we're gonna then place the thumb and we need to be able to mark the stitch in order to make that happen. So let's pick this up and let's uh, begin again. So all sizes what we're gonna do is that we are going to uh, position the thumb now at this point. So we're gonna chain up two and I want to have double crochet into the next nine. So continue into that same one below. And let's count those out together for nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So now I have my nine in here and now what I want to do is that we need to place, we need to chain two. So one and two but watch what I do. The second chain I need you to pull this out and just pull out the hook not the stitch but just insert into the second chain and I need you to place that stitch marker through there. This is important because next time we do the thumb later on in this tutorial this is gonna mark where we're gonna start. Okay so we're just putting it in there and what I want to do is just put most of it down the center of this mitten so it's out of your way. So just tuck it in and then put this back on the hook. So what I wanna do now is that I wanna make space for the thumb. So for the thumb what we have to do is that we have to skip a certain amount of stitches. So we're gonna skip uh, six stitches it says. So just coming back here so you're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and six. And go to the seventh and I want you to half double crochet into the seventh one. Right there. Okay so that was just the thumb that you just made and now for the remaining of this round you're just gonna half double crochet. Okay so join it with the slip stitch and I'll see you at the end of this round. So for the next round of the thumb what we have to do is that we have to make sure that we can make this even thicker right here right, right where we did that. We can either count our stitches but watch what I do because next time you make your second pair you won't. So you'll, you'll chain two and you'll half double crochet the first nine. So let's do that. So we're, I'm just gonna count it just to prove a fact. So one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And right where I am is the last stitch before you hit the chain. So you could either have counted that or you could have just, um, just trusted in yourself. So the next one here is the chain work. So going in making sure that you have two strands on top 
you're gonna half double crochet into that chain and to the next chain which there's only two chains there and that's the one with the stitch marker in there. It's in the second one just like there. And then you're just gonna continue around. So just getting that stitch marker out of the way. You don't wanna take it out yet and you're just gonna continue to do half double crochet into each stitch going all the way back to the beginning. Slip stitch to the first one and then we're gonna move on from that point. So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna uh, have to go around in circles until we get to three and a half inches from the top of the cuff. So here is the top here and it's three and a half inches. I only have to do one more round. I'm experienced enough in crochet knowing that it's only one more round. So you're just gonna chain up two and then you're half double crochet around and then we're gonna then start shaping the top. For the two to four years of age these are really quick and simple to make and that's because as I mentioned to you most of the work is done here in the cuff. So what I want to do is I just pick this up and I just want to finish off the top area here and I'm just gonna do one more round and just let me show you how to get started one more time. So we're just gonna start off by chaining two and then it's just one half double crochet into each all the way around. So in this particular round what we need to do is just just do this and then we're gonna start shaping the top to create the rounded look of the mitten at the top. So please do this half double crochet around and then just join it with the slip stitch to the beginning and then I'll show you how to start how to shape the top. So that's it. So we're now going to now shape off the top of this and then we're gonna do the thumb later. So let's uh, begin. There's only two rounds for this size here and we're going to chain up two and we're gonna start decreasing stitches. So we're gonna do one half double crochet into the first three. So let's do that before I get too complicated. So one, two and three. Now the next two are gonna be come together. So half double crochet two together. So wrap that hook going into the next stitch, pull through. Wrap the hook again and going into the next stitch after that and pull through. You have five loops on your hook, pull through all five. Two just became one. So for the repeat pattern for this whole round is that the next three will be by itself. So one, two and three and then the next two are together. So just put those together like that and then restart again. So next three and then two and or three and then put two together. Please do that all the way around. If you've maintained your stitch counts when you get to the end the last two will be uh, together and that's no that's no nothing fancy. I'm just keeping in line with that that count. Okay so we're just gonna join it to the top of the beginning like that and then we're gonna do one more round. So let's uh, see what we're doing with this round here is that we're gonna chain up two and it says one half double crochet into the next two. So the first one and the next one. So two in a row are half double crochets by themselves and then the next two are together. So just going into the next one, pull through. The next one after that, pull through. Put those together. Okay so that's two by itself. One and two and then the next two are together. Okay so please do that all the way around. So coming up all the way around the final two stitches are going to be two together. Okay so that was just a matter of keeping in count with the pattern. So let's just join it to the top of the first one and that's it. So what we want to do is that you're gonna be left with a small hole that's in the front of this or in the top. And what I wanna do is just trim up enough yarn that I can use for a darning needle. And I'm just gonna pull this out Okay so I just all the way went through and what I want to do is feed this onto a darning needle. Just like that. And all I'm just gonna do is just trace the outside stitches like a whip stitch and I'm gonna pull those all together at the end. So I'm just loosely kind of putting them in. You wanna spend time on this particular process especially if it's a child they will use the tip of their mitts a lot. And you don't want any fingers to pop them through either especially if it's cold out. So just going around and we're gonna pull it shut once we get all the way around. I enjoy this part of a process when you go to pull things together and it kind of slams everything shut. and you wanna go back to where you had started. So here's where I am. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm just gonna hold it and then just pull. And it's gonna pull everything right to the top. So now what I want to do is secure in this top so I'm just gonna go across diagonally. 
just like this. Again, I'm just putting extra strength right in the top of this by doing so. So I'm just stretching it out now and just seeing where I need to place these stitches. So once I'm satisfied with it, what I'll do is that I will just place it through a small little knot area. So I'll just feed it through and it will lock onto itself. And then if I go in and out of the project three times, I can get rid of that loose end without you even seeing it. So just go one and then back the other way for two and back the other way for three. Just like that. So now that I'm done that, I, I can trim that now right out to the project and I can stretch. So now at this point, I still have the thumb to make, uh, to get that in there and this place marker is showing me where it is and then that's what's next. So let's do our thumb. So let's place our thumb and let's put this so that you're looking at the top of the, the mitten from this point of view, okay? And the reason for it is that the place marker is on this side as well. So creating a slip knot with your yarn, we're going to fill in these spaces. So if you remember that we had six single crochets here and then we had chaining of two. So right where we've got the stitch marker is where we're going to join it for the first time. Okay, so we're gonna just go in there and that was part of that chain. So you can pull that out now. You've got it and you can just fasten on with the slip stitch and you can chain two, one and two and then you can go into that same stitch. That will be your first half double crochet and you're gonna go into the next chain. So you've just now satisfied that. So here's the thing, it doesn't say this in the pattern but if you jump now down to where this is with the first one, you're gonna end up with a gap. Let me prove this to you right here. You're gonna end up in a gap in your mitten right here. Do you see that? So in order to get rid of that, it doesn't say to do this in the pattern but this is what I would do is that you wrap the hook and we're gonna put two together. So we're just gonna go into the side of this stitch here. It'll pull this together and then I want you to go into that first stitch then. Okay, so you got five loops on your hook and you're gonna pull through all five. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna pull that over and it's gonna uh, satisfy your first stitch. So let's uh, continue to go around. So remember that there's already the first one is there so there's only gonna be five more left. So just single or half double crochet. So one and two and do you think I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side of that fancy thing I just showed you? You bet your boots I'm going to. It just makes sense. It saves you from sewing it later and uh, it's just a, it's a nice little feature. So here's the last one here. So again, this is where you're started right over here. You'll end up with the gap right here if you do the same thing. So just going in, pulling through, coming to the side of this, okay, just to pull it over and then pull through all of it. Okay, that was the last one and then join it to the beginning half double crochet. So it's just a little cheating technique that I think you'll like and therefore you will not see any gaps within the front of your mittens. So now you just satisfied this and now you have a little hole and now we're gonna continue to work around that. So what we have to do now is that we have to continue to go around this little hole until it gets to an inch and a half. So we just get our tape measure out. It's not very long and all we just gotta do is right where we started, we just measure an inch and a half and that's how long your thumb is going to be. So let's uh, just start and we're just going to um, create this and we're just, I'll just show you how to get started and then you grab your measuring tape and do it. So let's begin. We're gonna chain up two. Remember it's just a builder into the same one underneath and you're just gonna circle around. There's only eight stitches going all the way around and you're just gonna circle around and totally get all of these as you go. So just and then when you get back to where you did, you do a slip stitch and then you just start again until you get to an inch and a half and then I'm gonna show you how to close out the top of this thumb because you'll still have a hole. Okay, so now that I just measured my inch and a half, I'm now gonna close off the top of my thumb. So I'm just gonna chain two and every two stitches are going to become one. So I'm gonna put half double crochet two together each each time you run into two. So that just becomes, uh, two just became one. We do it again. You can only do it for four times on this particular side of it. So just continue to do that all the way around. And then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna grab our, our darning needle again and close off the top like we did on the very beginning. So we're gonna go into our final two now. And 
and then we're gonna join like that. So you can see it really does a nice join at the top or a nice closed off area. So we're just gonna trim our work and then just pull this through. And now there's not gonna be much of a big hole there. So you do need to finish it off though or you will have a, a thumb popping out at the top here. And all you're just gonna do is just feed it down here and just kinda go across and close off that top of the thumb with each other. You can do a nice job on this, uh, just take your time. For me, I kinda rush because it's a kind of a tutorial. So you just wanna make sure I can not see any top opening uh, anymore. Once you're satisfied, just tie, uh, tie a loose little knot here. So just pulling it through and then back in and out of the work three times. So one, two, and three. Once you have your three in there, you can just safely trim that work. And all of a sudden you have a mitten just like so. I think I might have been off by, <laughs> I think that looks longer than an inch and a half here. Um, but that's uh, what you have and this is a kind of a cool thing. So watch this thumb area. I think I'm off by probably one round. Probably just, uh, I probably didn't stretch it enough. But this is what the, uh, it looks like. It's really quite easy. And until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crown as well as yarnspirations.com. Have a great day. <laughs>